In this tutorial in CyberLink PowerDirector, we're going to look at how to do advanced editing of the Adorage transition. I have two clips on track number one. The one is a young woman on the phone, and the second is a guy on the phone. I'm going to add an Adorage transition between the two and do some advanced editing. So to get to my transitions room, I simply click on the icon with the lightning bolt or I press the F8 key. Then I take the Adorage transition and drag and drop it between the two clips. The default transition for the Adorage is a simple fade. And so as I play it, it fades from the one clip to the second one. But we're going to change that. So I click back on my clip and then above my track, I click on modify. That brings me to this screen on the left, Transition Settings. I'll click the Stand Alone Effect button. That will launch the Adorage Operation Center. This Adorage menu gives me several options. First thing I want to do is change to a different transition for illustrative purposes. So I'm going to click on Volume 13, which is one that's common in most versions of PowerDirector. And I'll click on Hearts, and I'll choose the first one, Heart 01. And with that selected, I can click on any of these buttons to get into the next menu. It doesn't matter which one I pick. I'll just pick Video A. And now I see a submenu. The tabs are the same as what we had on the prior, previous screen. Video A, Video B, Mixer, Smoke, and Overlay. So what we're going to do here is simplify this to start with. I'm going to click on the Overlay tab, and I am going to take out the Overlay graphic. We don't need this, this rose picture inside the heart, so I'll click the down arrow and choose None. I'll also take off the associated clipping mask for the overlay. Down arrow, and I'll choose None. Now I'm going to go back to the mixer. Now I have a simpler option here but I'd want to change a few other things. The first thing I'd like to do is I'd like to change the mask that we use. And so what I'm going to do is click on the folder icon to the left of the mask and click on Select File. This will give me an opportunity to sort through all of the masks that I have in my copy of PowerDirector. Your list may be slightly different from mine, but one of the things I'm going to pick for this illustration, I have a file called mask underscore double zero one. I'll click on that. That's my new mask. And I'll click on open. So that's the mask I'm going to use. Now I want to make some changes to it. Because in this particular case, what happens is the mask comes out and then it begins to dissolve and it goes back. I'd like to change the motion behavior of the mask. So under Properties of Mask, I'm going to click on the Motion button. Now we see how this works. The Starting Position tab says it starts small. You notice the size is 0, 0. The Ending Position is full screen. I want to reverse that almost. Let's go back to Starting Position. Let's turn this up to 100 and 100. I could either move the slider or I can change the numbers manually in the box. Now the mask basically is static. It does nothing. But we're going to change the ending position. I like to change the ending position so that the uh, vertical size is nothing. But the horizontal size is there. And you see what begins to happen as we change the motion properties of the mask. Then I I'm going to click on OK. And so now it, it scrunches down to nothing in the middle. But I still have it opening and closing. This is where the starting point and the ending point of the mask come in. What I'd like to do now is take the starting point and have it start halfway through this, this procedure. So I'll go 50%. So now it w opens wide like that to end. There's some other things I want to change on the mask. I'm going to change the border color. You notice right now the border color is this file. And I could click on any other file under border color and select it and change the color of the border. Um, let's take this light blue 
with a little bit of white in it and click on open and see what difference that one makes. Okay, that's nice. Um, maybe not exactly what I want. I can also simply select any color if I want to. I click on the down arrow and I can click on color here. It, the default is black as you'll see in a moment. I can go to select color and I can pick anything else that I want. Um, for now, let's just click this one here and click on OK and see how that works. Not too bad. I can change the sharpness of the border. I can soften it and see how that works. And that begins to look a little bit different. I can also change the fader starting point or the ending status. I can invert the graphic if we click on this way. And that's not too bad either. That's another option in this particular case. But uh, these are examples of some of the kinds of things you can change when you go to modify the properties of the mask, the border color, or the starting and ending point of the mask. Mm -hmm.